الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم الذي حجر ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوط عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد صدق الله العظيم This surah that I have just recited talks about some previous nations that were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have prophets of Allah amongst them and Allah blessed them with a lot of strength, power, and wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those nations that what did they, they do with these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what was the result of their treatment to these messengers of Allah <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he talks about those nations at the very beginning of the surah reminds us some of the things that will help us protect our souls from falling into the same thing that those people fall into Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those nations. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'ad. Haven't you seen what your Lord did to the people of Ad? Iram, that al imad, the people of Iram, who are the people of pillars, which means very strong people. Allati lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. Allah says, the kind of people that I have never created on the surface of the earth. التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد The type of people that were never created like those in strength and power. وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد And have you seen what happened to the people of Thamud? Another nation that was not that, that was not only given the strength it was given you can say the technology in our language by which they used to turn the mountains into castles up to these days their village exists the way it was at that time with their buildings of course because those buildings are made out of mountains وَفِرْعَوْنَ ذِي الْأَوْتَاتِ الَّذِينَ طَغَوْا فِي الْبِلَادِ And have you seen what happened to the, uh, to the people of Pharaoh? The people of nails, Allah says, 
ذل أوتاد وتد مينز نيل إن أرابيك لانجويج and there are different reasons Mufassirin have mentioned why they are called the people of Niles one of them was as soon as he gets upset with someone and he does not like any nation he would get all the people of that nation and will nail them on the ground on, on, on the walls will hang the people on the walls and will put nails in their hands and their feet this is one of the reasons that he's called the Autad But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with all of this strength and power that these nations had when they rejected Anbiya alayhim as salatu was salam see what happened to these nations and Allah talks in details in Quran al-Kareem in many ayahs of Quran al-Kareem of what happened to those nations and what was the final destination of these nations. The simple example of Pharaoh it was an amazing thing situation it is something that might be talking from just our understanding from our way of looking at things it was impossible for those things to take place what took place at that time Pharaoh with all of his strength and power everything that he had and there is a small nation that are slaves of all of these people they have nothing that they can do they have no power no strength there is no way whatsoever that this nation looking from our point of view that this nation would ever be able to do anything to Pharaoh and his followers but the thing that happened it was unlike all the other nations the thing that happened to this nation, to Pharaoh and his followers, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam and his followers was very amazing. And we may use the word unbelievable. Something that we can never, in our calculations, it will never work out. And there is no possible possibility of having something like this. And what was that? All of that nation, with all of their people, leaving everything behind them, all of their castles, all of their wealth, everything, leaving it behind them. And here, they are following Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. The whole nation gets droned into the ocean. All the men of that people of that nation are drowned into the ocean. And here, that small group, the followers of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, they get the whole country, no war, no fight, nothing to do. Everything is just set and ready for them. If we were to plan for anything like this, it's impossible. If there is a war, there will always be some destruction. We will lose some people. Not a single person loses his life. There is no war that takes place. And it's not that those people burn their houses and we cannot even get their houses and castles. At least we got rid of those people. No. Everything is just set the way it was. They slept at the night time with all the sex in the home. Everything is there prepared. With all the luxuries in their homes and their castles. In the morning, they are under the ground and this other nation takes over all of their castles and everything that they left behind. Everything is set and ready for them. This is how Allah's plans work. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah is reminding us that look at what happened to those nations who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling us certain facts of our lives that we need to follow in order to protect ourselves from being like those. Those were the nations, they were not the nations who did not have a prophet amongst them. They had a prophet amongst them. The prophet of Allah is holding a book of Allah in his hands. He is going to them home to home. Believe, believe me, believe in this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe in the oneness of Allah. 
So the Prophet of Allah is amongst them. He's teaching them, but they're rejecting the teachings of the Prophets of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the beginning of the surah, what are the things that will be able to hold us to our deen and God forbid, after having this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we won't fall into the similar type of things. Now look, the nation that was helped against Pharaoh, the nation that was helped, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them at the time when he was helping them, he said, وَأَنِّي I have given you people preference over all the nations of the world. Now at this time you are the best nation in the world and therefore I help you in such a way that no one else got, got this type of help that all of your enemies are, just, are gone and they are going such a way that they left all of their belongings, their homes, their castles and even their women at their homes to serve you after that, after you take over their homes. I left all of those things for you people. Because وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ I have given you preference over all the people of the world. Very same nation, after some years, they proved that they do not deserve that position of وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ of being the best nations. And then the ayahs, within 900 years, within 900 years of that وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ the ayahs were revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ The same, the very same nation became al-maghdubi alayhim. The one that was cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, they came to me while, and when they came to me, I blessed them with this title. أَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Made them the best nation. But within some years, they went back. And they had the title of Al Maghdubi alayhim. They went back with the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens with us is we look at the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa jama'een and at those groups of the Ummah. And then we start comparing ourselves with those people. And we feel we should get everything the way those people got it. Yes, we can get it. And those doors are open for us. But we need to follow the same steps as those people did. We cannot ignore the book of Allah. We cannot ignore the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And still expect to be the same type of people as they were. And get the same help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they got. Previous nations made the same mistake. There were people out of them who had the same title, who had the title of Wani Fadaltukum al Alameen, best nations of the time. But within some time, and it did not even take for generations to pass and and for uh, to take hundreds of years before that title will change. Just their own children, their own children change the situation so much. And the lifestyle changed so much that Allah says, Al-Maghdubi alayhim, they were cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us certain things in these ayahs. I don't want to go any further in that topic. Because we need to come back to these ayahs. And in these ayahs, He's telling us certain things that will help us hold to our deen. At least, if not, be of that level of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa jama'een, of the scholars of the Ummah, of the Mashaykh of the Ummah, of the Muhaddisin and Mufassirin, at least to be able to hold to our deen. There are certain things that we have to do that will at least assure us that we are attached to our deen. And those are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath of in these ayahs of Al-Quran al-Kareem. Wal-Fajr, Walayalin Ashr, Wal-Shaf'i Wal-Wat, Wal-Layli Ida Yusr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with his oath with Wal Fajr. I swear by the time of Fajr. The time when most of those who are supposed to be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are still in their beds. When most of those who are supposed to be in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are still in their homes. 
when most of those who are supposed to be reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are listening to radios or reading a newspaper. Well, Fajr, Allah says, I swear by that time. That time is very important. Recite that ayah of Quran where Allah says, Wa Quran al Fajr. Inna Quran al Fajr kana mashhuda. He says, The recitation of Quran at the time of Fajr, it's the time of recitation when even angels come to listen to your recitation of Quran al Kareem. Inna Quran al Fajr kana mashhuda. Angels come to witness that recitation of Quran and they will witness for us on the day of judgment. Ya Allah, I went to this person. He was reciting Quran at that time. Inna Quran al Fajri kana mashhuda. This is what Allah says in Quran about the recitation of the time of Fajr. That when you recite Quran at that time, angels are witnessing. They are around you. They sit with you. They listen to your recitation of Quran. This is why he's taking off one Fajr. I take oath by this time of Fajr, you use it properly, you will be in touch with your deen. You will be able to safeguard your deen and your iman. The next thing is, وَلَيَالٍ عَشَرٌ And ten nights. Big cells are coming up. A type of cells that we will not have them again throughout the year. There are big cells over there. And we must know about it so that we can go and get whatever we want during this time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the flyers of these seals in our homes quran speaks in every home i swear by these ten nights they are very important nights rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith ma min ayyamin there aren't any other days of the year where the good deed pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as a deed, good deed that is performed during these 10 days of the month of Zul-Hajjah, the first 10 days of the month of Zul-Hajjah. These are the most important days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He likes to see human beings and likes to see the believers being busy in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wordings of the hadith is, Ahabbu ila Allah. Allah loves, hub is love. Allah loves the deeds, simply means loves the person who performs these good deeds during these 10 days of the month of Zul-Hajjah. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in, of course they had heard a lot of virtues of different deeds. So, now, those hadiths are going through their mind that there is so much virtue of this deed, of the other deed, of that deed. So they asked Ya Rasulullah, none of the deeds is dear to Allah performed in any other time of the year. Then the deeds performed during the month of Zul Hajjah, he said, none of the deeds, no deed performed any other time of the year can be as dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as any nafil, any ibadah performed during these 10 days of Zul Hajjah. In another hadith which is in Sunan Tirmidhi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that each day, the fasting of each day of these 10 days of the Hajjah, and of course 10 days means 9 days because the 10th of the Hajjah is not allowed to fast, that's the day of Eid. The fasting of each day equals to the fasting of one year. And because we cannot fast on the 10th, Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the bonus on the ninth day. So the fasting of the ninth day of the Hajjah equals to fasting of two years. Fasting of one day will get the reward of fasting of for two years. In other words, fasting nine days will get us the reward of fasting for ten years. What type of cells we have? See what are the opportunities that we have and we are missing them. As soon as we get the flyers in our, with our papers, the whole family sits with those flyers. Make sure that we don't miss anything. And then we'll keep on calling our friends and everyone in the town. But you know, there are very important sales over there. 
I got this so cheap, I got this so inexpensive, and we are showing every, everyone what we got from those sales. Let's show these things also. And this is the time when we can get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a mu'min. There can't be any word more important than the wordings that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is using about these 10 days of the Hajjah that Allah loves the deeds performed in these days. Which means loves the person who performs the deeds in these days. What can be better than being loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These 10 days, we talked about the days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, even nights are very important. In fact, nights are more important than the days. We say the fasting of 10 days is like fasting of 10 years. Or 9 days is fasting like, like fasting 10 years. And the nights are even more important and more have more virtue than the days. So imagine how much virtue will be in the ibadah of the nights of these days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make us understand the virtue of it. He says, وَكُلُّ لَيْلَةٍ تَعْدِلُ بِلَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ Each night of these nights equals to the night of Qadr. So here now we have 10 nights of Qadr. 10 nights that might get us the reward of what we get during the night of Qadr. In fact, there is difference of opinion between the muhaddisin. That which of the nights are better? The night of the Hajjah or the nights of Ramadan? And many of them, you will be surprised to hear this, many of them are of the opinion that other than Laylatul Qadr, the nights of the Hajjah are more important than nights of Ramadan. But the thing is, during the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes the doors of the Jahannam. He changed the shayateen. So only we receive only the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find ourselves coming to the masajid. At this time, that thing is not there. And here we can realize that when shayateen is with us and they are free and we just be under their whisperings how difficult it is for us to use the time properly and be involved in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that these days are, these nights are like the night of Qadr. And as I said, most of the muhaddisin are of the opinion that other than Laylatul Qadr, the nights of the 10 nights of the Hajjah are more important than the nights of Ramadan. But still we don't find ourselves being able to do what we can do during the month of Ramadan. One of the hints that Muhaddisin or Mufassirin have mentioned through these ayahs, well, Fajr, that the person who really makes use of the time of Fajr is punctual for performing Salat al-Fajr, that person will be able to use these 10 nights of the month of the Hajjah, and those who miss that time, they won't be able to make use of these 10 nights of, of the Hajjah. This is why Allah started with well, Fajr, and then He says, Walayal in Ashara. I swear by these 10 nights. These are some of the most important nights of this year, of the year that we have. And hopefully, starting this Monday, those nights will start, or those 10 days of the Mudal Hajjah will start. So we need to use this time and start getting into the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use it as good as we can. Days are very important, nights are very important. One of the things Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended that for those who are to offer a sacrifice which simply means those who can afford to offer a sacrifice they should do it because the hadith says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith Man wajada sa'atan wa lam yudahhi fala yaqrabanna musallana He sobs and with those who are able to offer the sacrifice and they don't do it Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says a person who can offer the sacrifice and he does not offer it should not perform salat al eid with us. Simply means those who can offer it should offer it. And for those who are able to offer it, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended the hadith of the Majah that those people should not cut their nails or cut any hair of the body 
during these 10 days of the Hajjah until after Salat al Eid, once they have offered the sacrifice. To resemble the Hajjaj, because the same order is given to those who are in Ihram. Once the person is in Ihram, then it's not good for those people to cut any hair. In fact, for those people, if they would do it, they would have to pay penalties. Hajj is a very amazing ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow people to apply any perfume. If you apply perfume during the haram, you will have to pay a penalty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow any man to wear any dress that is sewn that they normally wear. Only two sheets. And if they would wear the regular dress, they will have to pay a penalty. And if they wear it for a long time, they will have to offer a sacrifice. Why? Because these dresses, that perfume, combing our hair, all of these things are to look nice in the eyes of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants those people to forget about what people think about them. Just think of what Allah wants from you and keep on doing what Allah wants. This is why I don't even put a perfume. Because as soon as you put a perfume, you think that, okay, people are smelling the perfume. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, not even perfume. Unfortunately, many times you find people who come back from Hajj, they would talk, oh, those people are like this. And they gave us hard time at the airport. They gave us a hard time at that time. And there were people from that country who were doing this. And people from that country who were doing this. And we will start judging all the people. Subhanallah. Look at the orders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives about the Hajjaj. For example, a person goes for Hajj and he sees that the grass in Makkah Mukarramah is getting so long that no one is cutting the grass and he feels, you know, this is the house of Allah and this is around the house of Allah. This is the city where the house of Allah is. So let me cut the grass for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, none of your business. He says, you can't do this. And if you do it, you will have to pay a penalty. A person sees animals over there. He sees, oh, beautiful bird. Let me catch this bird. Let me see this bird. Allah says, if you're going to catch the bird, you'll have to pay a penalty. The birds have to be saved. The animals have to be saved. The grass has to be saved. The trees have to be saved. All of these have to be saved. But how about human beings? Those are the only people that are not safe. Or the only thing that is not safe from us. Allah tells us, by these orders, simply he's telling us, you are not going over there to worry about the city, about the streets of the city, about the grass of the city, about the trees of the city. All you have to do is keep on doing your ibadah. Don't worry about the city. Don't worry about anything that is in the city. Don't worry about your own perfumes. Don't worry about or your own dress. Put your kafan on and just walk to my home. That's all you have to worry about. So in order to resemble those people, to get similar type of benefit, those people are getting so much rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get something out of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, try to resemble those people. <coughs> and in order to resemble those people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, which is in Sunan ibn Majah, that don't trim your, uh, your nails, don't cut any hair of the body, because similar order is given to Hajjaj. But for us, if we do it, there is no penalty. If they would do it, there is penalty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to give us as much rahmah as possible by giving us all of these opportunities. We had only less than two months ago. It was the month of Ramadan. Two months and ten days from Ramadan, from the finish, from finishing of Ramadan, and we have Hajj. The other end. So within two months, the season of Hajj, of course, the season of Hajj starts just after Ramadan. The months of, the, uh, of Hajj are Shawwal, Dhul Qada, and the first 10 days of the Hajj. These are called Ashhur al-Hajj in Sharia. These are the days of Hajj. Of course, Hajj will be performed only in these last 10 days. But they are called Ashhur al-Hajj. Simply means that if a person wants to wear ihram from the day of Eid, from the day of Eid, as soon as Ramadan is over, on the day of Eid, he says that now I want to start my next ibadah and start preparing for Hajj. That person is allowed to wear ihram from that day. 
although it's not good to wear it on the day of Eid, it's that next day of Eid, but from that time we are allowed to put the haram on. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us, continuously giving us opportunities one after another so that we keep in touch with our deen. And God forbid we don't start going off the track the way the previous nations did. And then the nation who had the title of Faddaltukum ala al-alameen who has given preference over all the people of the world. Very same nation. They were holding the book of Allah in their hands. And up to now, we call them the people of book. They were holding the book of Allah in their hands. But book was in their hands. It wasn't in their lives, in their hearts. Allah says, Al-Maghdubi alayhim, I cursed that nation. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa that I'm worried. I'm worried that people will come in this nation who will be cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way the previous nations were cursed. One of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een, whose name was Ziyad bin Labid radiallahu anhu, he asked, Ya Rasulullah, how, how is that possible? How would that happen? Because we recite the Quran, we recite the book of Allah, and we are going to keep on teaching this book to our children, and our children will teach, will teach it to their, their children, and this book of Allah will remain in our lives. With us, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Ziyad, Ziyad, don't you see the Jews and Christians? They have the book of Allah, but they don't practice what's in their book. So we are holding a book in our hands. We are putting it in our, in our shows. How about in our lives, in our hearts? How, much, how many ayahs of the Quran we understand of this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of these surahs we can recite it properly that we can say, okay, if I'm made to stand on this musallah and leave the salah, I can recite those ayahs and those surahs very easily because I, I, recite, I know I, I recite them properly. We will be afraid to recite these ayahs. And when it comes to explanation, to the meaning, to understanding, and then to practicing it, we will find that we are falling into the similar situations of those people who are holding the book of Allah and they thought because we have the book of Allah, we are just like the children of Allah. And as soon as we die, we are going straight into Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, you're wrong. God forbid we might be making the same mistake. Holding the book of Allah in our hand and looking that, oh, Sahaba Ridwanullah because they were holding the book in their hand, they got all of this. It wasn't because they were holding the book in their hands. They were having the book in their hearts, in their lives. So these are the opportunities. If we don't even use these opportunities, then at what time of the year are we going to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Our nafs and shaitan will tell us, okay, right now I'm a little busy, but some other time, inshallah, next month I will stand. It will, will never stand. So these 10 days are coming of the month of the Hajjah that are very important and some of the most important time of the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us with where there are big sales on the ibadah of Allah as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam us just fasting of each day will get us the reward of fasting of one year may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to use these opportunities and be able to get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to surat al-mustaqeem and benefit all of us from this deen and from the Qur'an and from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa ilal muslimina wal muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.